Now, a few words about the basic terminology about Qur'an. The unit of Qur'an is called ayah. We don't call it a sentence. We don't call it a verse. Some of the writers use this word for Qur'an, but as far as I think, we shouldn't use it. Neither the, the word sentence nor verse, we have to keep this word ayah. It's very unique. Ayah means a sign or a symbol. Actually, every ayah of Qur'an is a sign or symbol of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we cannot substitute any other word in its place. We have to keep it. And because during this translation of the Qur'an, I'll be keeping this terminology. That is why I'm explaining in the very beginning. Ayat, ayat. But if ayat, you know, if there is full stop after that, we call it ayah. So these are fundamental things, you know, ayah and ayat is the same. And the plural is ayat. Now, ayat, you know, they are very small also, very large also. We have, you know, haruf e they also go to make ayah. Ha mean, it is ayah. Alif lam mean, it is ayah. Then wal asr, it is ayah. Inna al insana rafi khusr, it is again an ayah. And then there are ayat in which you can have ten sentences. Ayatul Kursi, for example. A very big ayah. One of the biggest ayats of the Qur'an. So actually, these, this, these ayat, you know, they, they are not based on any grammatical or any other logical, only principle of logic or grammar. This is based on as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. And we call it in this terminology, tawqifi, these umur, these matters are tawqifi. They are maquf alay on the telling of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he told, we, we accept it. No reason, no principle, no logic, no grammar. Now these ayat, you know, you may note here, there are about 6,666. There is some difference in number. But round about 6,500 ayat of the Qur'an, whole. Now these ayat, second term is surah, and the plural is suwar. But you know this word is because it's not commonly used. I'll be using the word surah and, and surahs during this translation, when we are translating into English. And what is surah? Surah is not a chapter. Please note, these terms are not applicable to the Qur'an. These terms which we use about the books generally, sentences, paragraphs, there are no paragraphs in the Qur'an. Then there are no chapters. This is not chapter. Because you know for every chapter of a book, there must be a certain topic, and the, that topic should be discussed in that chapter alone. It shouldn't be repeated in the second chapter, or again in the third chapter. But we find in the Qur'an that even the story of Adam and and Iblis, it has been repeated in seven surahs of the Qur'an. So actually it's a unique book. It's not the common book as we know the word book, human books. This is a unique book in itself, and it has its own compilation, its own style, its own terminology. So ayat, then the ayat are joined together in surahs. There are 114 surahs of the Qur'an. And these surahs, you know, are very small also. Three surahs are there who have only three ayat each. Walas, inna linsana lafi khusr, illa lazina amanu amilu salihati wa tawaswa bil haqqi wa tawaswa bil sabr. Surah is complete. In the same way, inna aqayna kal kawsar, fasalli li rabbika wal haq, inna shaniya ka huwa labtar. Surah is complete. And on the other hand, we find Surah Al-Baqarah. 286 ayat. And among these 286 ayat, there are certain ayat which are so long that Ayatul Kursi is at least three times bigger than Suratul Asr. So actually these sizes are also dependent upon what the Prophet Sallallahu told us. These are Tawqifi Umur, not based on any logic, not based on any principle. The only principle is that the Prophet told us this is Suratul Baqarah. Starts from here and here. This is Surah Al Ibran. Starts from here and here. It is small or large, big or small. It has nothing to do with any number, any size, any principle of grammar. But 
as far as the contents are concerned, there are principles. Every surah has a central theme. And all the ayat of that surah, they are connected with that central theme, logically. They are absolutely logical relationship. But you know, not as we find in our chapters. It's complete in itself, self-sufficient in itself. Then one point please note, and that is, most of the surahs of the Qur'an are in pairs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, a pair. In the same way, we, the, the Musaf ends with Mu'awwazatain. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Very similar to each other. That's a pair. In the same way, Wa'adduha wa layli za saja, alam nashah laka sadrak. The same thing being discussed in both the surahs. Addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam personally. It's a pair. Very apparently a pair. In the same way, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, Ya ayyuhal muddassir, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, Qum illa ila illa qalila, Ya ayyuhal muddassir, Qum fa'anzir. It is again a pair. So most of the surahs of the Qur'an are in pairs. Although there are surahs which are not in pairs. They are unique. They are munfarid. And most of such surahs are very important. But actually this, we shall be referring to these things during our translation. That is why I want to acquaint, acquaint you with this basic terminology. Now these surahs, the big surahs have been divided into rukus. This division was not present at the time of the Prophet or during the days of the Sahaba. It was done later on during the Umayyad period. And by a person which is not liked by many, and that is Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. He is the person who divided Quran, the bigger surahs of the Quran into rukus. Why? Because you know you can't recite the whole of Surah Al-Baqarah in one rakat in the prayer. So there must be portions. So can you can recite them in your prayers. So for that purpose, one ruku for every rakat. The, 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 the root is the same. Raka, ruku, rakat, and ruku. All these things, what are? One rakat. You, you can recite one ruku. So that su one subject is discussed in one ruku. So this was done later on, but it was not present in the days of the Prophet or of the companions. Radhi Allahu ta'ala anhu. In the same way, then the whole of the Quran was divided into 30 parts, which we call parads and parts in Quran. This division also was done later on, and we don't know when it was done. But it definitely was not present in the days of the Prophet wasallam, or of the companions. This was to facilitate the Muslims so that every Muslim can read and recite one para, one part of the Quran every day so that each month he completes one recitation of the whole of the Quran. But these two words, these two terms, rukus and paras or parts, they were introduced later on. They were not present during the days of the Prophet wasallam or of the companions, رضي الله تعالى But then, you know, another word which we find in Ahadith, that is Hizb. The surahs of the Qur'an, they were grouped in such a way that Qur'an was divided or divisible into seven nearly equal parts, not exactly equal. Some Hizb is more than five paras. First, first Hizb is more, more than five paras. Some is less, because you know if you divide thirty parts into, and you divide into seven, you know, so what will come? About four and a half in each, but we have somewhere it is four and a quarter, somewhere it is about four, somewhere it is more than five as I've told you. But the beauty is, and this world was present during the time of the Prophet Hizb, because people who had more love for Quran, they used to complete the recitation of the Qur'an in every week. So they had to divide Qur'an in seven parts, so that they can complete the recitation of the Qur'an in one week, seven days. So we find the beauty is that the surahs are complete. They are not broken in this division into ahzab or manzil, as we call it in, in Urdu generally, manzil. And the ahzab, this is the Arabic word mostly used. We have three surahs in the first. If you leave alone Surah Al-Fatiha, 
which is the preface of the whole of the Quran, then three surahs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, one manzil, one hizb. Then five in the next, seven in the next, nine in the next, eleven in the next, and eleven, thirteen in the next, and then sixty-five surahs in the seventh hizb. That is also a multiple of thirteen. Thirteen into five makes sixty-five. So actually there is a beauty, numerical beauty, as well as, you know, a gradual increase, three, five, seven, 9, 11, 13, and then 65. So this was also present, this division of the Qur'an into seven ahzab, or seven manazil, during the days of the Prophet ﷺ. Lastly, there is another grouping of these surahs. And incidentally, this is also in seven groups. These seven groups are groups of Makki and Madani surahs. We find in the Qur'an one or two Makki surahs, then one or more Madani surahs, it becomes one group. Then two or three or one or two Madani Makki surahs, then some Madani surahs, second group. Then Makki, then Madani, third group. Again Makki, again Madani, fourth group. Again Makki, again Madani, and so on. These are also seven groups. We find in the first group, Surah Al-Fatiha is the only surah which is Makki. Only one. Then four longest Madani surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Maida, and this goes to make the first group. This is not first manzil, first group of Makki Madani surahs. Then we have two surahs which are Makki, Surah Al-Anam, Surah Al-Araf. Again, two surahs which are Madani, Surah Al-Anfal, Surah Al-Tawbah. This is the second group. Then in the third group, we have fourteen surahs which are Makki, starting from Surah Al Yunus, ending with Surah Al Mu'minun, and only one surah which is Madani, and that is Surah Al Nur. Then eight surahs which are Makki, again one surah which is Madani, Surah Al Ahzab, so on. Then again thirteen surahs which are Makki, and then three surahs, Surah Al Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Surah Al Fath, Surah Al Hujrat, these are the Madani surahs. Then you know from Surah Al-Qaf till Surah Al-Waqiyah, they are the Makki Surahs. From Surah Al-Hadid to Surah Al-Tahreem, these are the Madani ten Surahs. And this is the sixth group. And finally, you know, it's nearly whole of it is Makki Surahs from Surah Al-Mulk to Surah Al-Ikhlas. Only the last two Mu'awwazatayn, they are the Madani Surahs. So these are also, and they are very meaningful. Every group has a central idea, central theme. And the aspects, you know, one aspect of central, that subject is discussed in the Bhakti Surahs. The other aspect of the same subject is discussed in the Badani Surahs of the same group. So this is the basic terminology, because it will be repeated time and time again during my translation of the Qur'an. And when I want to explain what, you know, uh, is the uh, meanings of those ayat and surahs. So this terminology is going to be repeated. That is why I wanted to acquaint you with the basic terminology before we started. And now 